Hello there, Mark Cunningham here. And in this video, we're going to take a look at how you can create or add basic bills to your system in Xero. I use the Australian demo company for this video, but you can use any version of Xero that you like. And if you'd like to learn more about Xero, check out the links to our courses in the description below. So let's jump into Xero now and see how it's done. So from the main dashboard screen here, there's a few ways that you can do this. The first one is that you can come down to this bills panel and you can click on the new bill button. Another way you can do it is through these quick links with the plus icon. So you can just click on that and then you can click on bill. And another way you can do it is to go to the menu and you can go to either the bills to pay or purchases overview screen and look for the buttons there. So we'll just go to bills to pay and we'll just go to the button at the top. Okay, and that takes us to the new bill template. So any of those options that I showed you before, if you um, choose one of those, you'll end up at this screen here. All right, so let's go through our new bill template step by step. And the first thing we need to do is actually put the name of the supplier in. So in this box here, if we type in a letter or a couple of letters, so we'll type in A, and you can see there that it's bringing through the names of all the suppliers uh, that we've got in our contacts list that have the letter A in them. So that's either at the start or further along. So if we put in AB, for example, we can see there we've got a smaller list and we can choose, say, ABC Furniture, for example. If your supplier is not actually in your contacts yet, so let's just put a couple of letters in here. If I put Z ZIL, for example, if we've got a supplier whose name starts with ZIL and it's not actually in the system yet, it will give us this little button here where we can create the new contact. And if you do create it, you can go ahead and finish your bill. And then later on, you can go into your contacts and you can set up that contact properly. So you can put um, contact details and bank account details and all that sort of thing in later. So we won't do that here. We'll just choose an existing one. So let's just say I'll put in CA and we'll go to the capital cab co. All right. So that's brought up that. Now we've got the date. So this is the bill date, uh, which is today's date. You can go in and choose a different date if you like. If you are putting the bill in a bit later and you need to go and get a previous date, for example, you can do that. And in the next box, we've got the due date. Now we haven't actually set up any default due dates um, in our system, either uh, for all of our suppliers or for this supplier in particular in their contacts. We didn't set it up. So that's why there's nothing there. If you do set that up, then the date will come through. So let's just say that this is due in a week's time. So we'll just choose the 24th of November. And then in the next box, we can put in a reference. So you can put in all kinds of things in here. If you've got a particular reference for the bill, you can just put that in. So I'll just put something in for this one. Okay, so I'll just put A-987 as the reference. The next option we've got along here is a place where we can add files or attach files to the bill. So if you click on this icon, you can go in and you can add files from your Xero library or you can upload files um, from your device and you can put any, or well, basically any kind of file in here. You, it can be a PDF or um, a JPEG photograph. It can be an Excel file, a Word document, um, all kinds of things really. So just to show you how this works, I'll just click on upload files and I'll just click on this basic text file that I've saved down. And you can see there now that I've uploaded it, it's got a one on there. So I'll just click on it again. And you can see there that we've got uh, file.txt is now attached to this bill. So we can just have that there for reference if, if we need to look at it later on when we go into the bill to check it for some reason. Okay, so that's how you attach files. The next thing along the top here is a total um, amount here that you can put in. And what this is, is if you have a, a bill, for, for example, that has lots and lots of lines and you want to make sure that you get to the right total, you can put the total in here. And once you've finished filling out these lines, zero will check if you go to approve the bill it will check the total down here against the total up here. 
And if they're different, it won't let you approve it. So that's just a little check total. So what I'll do is I'll actually just put something in there. Okay, so I'll just put in $100 and then later on we'll see um, zero checking the total of our bill against that $100. Okay, the next thing down is just the currency here. So we've only got one currency um, in our zero file, so we can just leave that as Australian dollars. That's just something that you can check if you've got a multi-currency account going on. And then finally, we get down into the bill itself. So what I'll do is I'll just fill out a little bit of detail here on the first line. Okay, so what I've done is I've just put in a taxi ride in Sydney as the description and the quantity is one, and then the unit price is $50. And that's brought the $50 over here um, into the uh, total column over there. Now it hasn't gone and automatically selected a general ledger code, so we have to go in and, and manually select one ourselves. And you can either open the drop down and you can go through, scroll down and find what you want and click on it. Or you can actually just type in some numbers or letters here. So if I type in Four one, for example, it'll bring up um, all the GL codes that have a four one there. Or you can do it by letter as well. So let's just say I put in TR for travel, and you can see there it's brought up a couple of GL codes that have got TR in them. So what I will do is I'll actually put this to travel national. So I'll just click on that one. And then it's gone and filled out the uh, GST tax rate here automatically being GST on expenses. So I'll just show you where that comes from. If we go up and duplicate the screen, and then we go into our chart of accounts. Okay, so we've got all accounts here. So I'll just scroll down this list and we'll see if we can find the travel national code, which will be up here a little bit. All right, so we've got travel national, that's the one we selected. And you can see we've got GST on expenses um, as the default tax code there. So that's why that's come through to here. So you need to make sure when you're doing your chart of accounts um, that you've got the right tax rates um, selected. And when you go to use them here, they'll just pull through. If you do need to change this, you can. You can just click on here and you can choose a different tax rate if you need to. Um, you know, uh, there could be some reason, particularly for things like entertainment, um, where you might need to go and actually just manually change the tax rate on a particular line in a bill, for example. And then along here, we also have our two tracking categories that we set up. So let's just assign these to uh, a region and we'll do that to a department. So we've got that assigned to the different tracking categories now. And that's that line all set up. Okay, so that's for a line that we completely fill in manually. I'll just show you what we do if we wanna pull through some information from products and services by choosing one of these items. So we'll go through and we'll just say, we're also going to buy a pack of nine golf balls. Okay, so when we choose that particular item, you can see that this has filled out the entire line for us there. We've got the description, the quantity, which obviously you can change it if you like, um, the unit price, the general ledger code of purchases, which has GST on expenses, and the grand total there is uh, $25. And we'll just leave the tracking categories blank for now because we did it up there. So you can actually go through and, and change um, this information if you like, but that's just a way of bringing that through and very quickly uh, getting that line filled out for you if, if it's something that you might buy quite regularly. So we'll just come over here and we'll just go to products and services just to have another quick look at where that information comes through. So over in products and services, we've got this inventory item set up for our nine pack of golf balls. And you can see there the cost price it's brought through and the other details are set up in there as well, such as the um, purchases account, for example, and the GST on expenses is from the chart of accounts. Okay, so we've got two lines there. So let's now have a look at how the uh, tax rates work. So at the moment we've got this set to tax exclusive. And that means it's adding up the 50 and the 25 to get $75 down here. And it's saying that that's exclusive of GST. So it has to add another $7.50 on top. And then we get a grand total there of $82.50. If we change that to inclusive, 
the 50 and the 25 now already include GST. So the 75 is the grand total and it's calculating one eleventh of the grand total in there to be the amount of GST. So you've just got to make sure you've got your tax inclusive and exclusive option correct if you want to get to the right grand total. And the other thing you've got here is a no tax one. And if I select that, you can see that these have both come up as BAS excluded. And now I can't even click into them. This, this um, column has sort of been grayed out. So we don't want that. I'll put that back into say uh, tax inclusive. And when I put it back, you can see it actually hasn't gone and changed these tax rates back. So you, you need to keep in mind that if you do that and you put it back, you need to come in here and manually select your tax rates again. All right, so that's just something to watch out for. All right, so now we've got our grand total of 75. We've got that including GST. So we're just going to have this as our full bill. So just a few other quick things. You can actually delete these blank lines if you want by clicking on the X. You can leave them there if you want. It doesn't affect the bill at all. If you want to add a new line, you can click on the button here or you can click on the drop down and you can add multiple lines at the same time to save yourself a bit of time there. Once you're happy with it, you can choose whether you want to save it as a draft or you can save it as a draft submitted for approval or you can just go ahead and approve it straight away and that will be ready for payment. If we come back over to our other screen and we'll just go to the bill screen, depending on what we do, it will end up in these buckets over here. So if we do save it as a draft, it will end up there. If we save it as a draft submitted for approval, it will end up in awaiting approval. And of course, if we approve it straight away, it will end up over here in awaiting payment. So what we'll do is we'll save it as a draft. Okay, so that's taken us back to the draft tab. And now we've got our bill there to Capital Cab Co for $75. So from here, what we can do is we can actually just tick that checkbox and approve it right away, or we can actually submit it for approval as well if we wanted to go through that step. But we can approve it right away from here, or we can go back in uh, to the bill. So let's say we're a different person and we want to go in and actually check it before we approve it. We can just go back in and we can have a look over it and then we can say that's all fine and then hit approve. And I'll just show you what happens now when you try and approve a bill where the total here doesn't match the total up the top. Okay, so you can see that zero is not letting us approve it because the totals do not match. So it did let us save it as a draft, but it didn't let us approve it for payment. So what you can do now is if you know that it's actually supposed to be $75 as the total, you can change that to $75 and then you can hit approve and that'll be fine. Or if for some reason you just don't want that total in there at all, you can just take it out and have nothing in there and hit approve and it'll, it'll, it will also go through just fine. So let's just approve it now that I've changed it to 75. Okay, so that's been approved. So we'll just go now to our uh, bills to pay screen. All right, so now that's moved into the awaiting payment bucket. That's it there, the Capital Cab Co for $75. So that's how you create a bill um, in Zero, and you can save it as a draft and you can um, approve it uh, ready for payment. So that's it for this video.